Welcome back everyone to the VMware Cloud Foundation Transform Series. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here. I'm Amara Mohammed, VP of Partner Ecosystem for Broadcom, VCF division. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. Thanks for hosting us. So this is a big part of the change with VCF is now the platform for private cloud, reimagine, replatform, whatever you want to call it. It's got a nice launch week here. Partners are critical. Um, integration has been a big part of the product roadmap yeah. and feature set as the team's been working hard to release all the new goodies like Kubernetes automation built in, all cool stuff. Um, the partners are critical to success here. How is the ecosystem evolving? Give us an update on the, the current ecosystem and how it's changing and evolving. Absolutely, absolutely. So as you said, the key to our go-to-market is simplification. And uh, since the acquisition completion with Broadcom, uh, we have been on this journey for simplifying things. And when it comes to simplifying things, especially on our, all our partner ecosystem as well, is establishing clear swim lanes to make sure that we are operating or we are working with each of those partners in those swim lanes. So I'll touch on all of them. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, starting with OEM. Okay. OEM is a big, big um, uh, group of partners that uh, help bring the software and the hardware magic together. Um, over the last two and a half decades, we kind of got into a mixture of resell relationship and OEM relationship, we're going back to basics. We're saying our OEM relationship is going to be centered around building together with OEM jointly engineered system, where the magic of software and hardware come together and we really solve a customer business problem. That's what we want to be able to do. So uh, good news, all of our top OEM partners are now signed up signed a new contract, we are now working together with them, and you will hear more announcements that uh, Explorer in terms of what we will be uh, bringing together with those OEMs. So OEMs, hardware manufacturers, people pride in the hardware and software mix, those contracts are in place, these are the partner programs? These are the partners. So if you, if you remember back in December, January, yeah. we had to bring together multiple partner programs that VMware had into the Broadcom Partner Advantage program. Mm -hmm. So tactically, yes, some of those old contracts had to be um, you know, revamped, to new Broadcom yeah. Advantage program. So we have a single program, single Broadcom Advantage program, and we grandfathered all of the tiers of those partners into the new program as well, so that nobody loses any of their credentials or any of their certifications. So just to be clear, there was a little bit of a pause there because you have to revamp it. So Absolutely. it's all fixed, everything's Ev up and running. Everything is up and running. All of the partners are now on board and they are working with us on uh, from an OEM perspective and hyperscalers and CSPs and our reseller partners. That's awesome, right. so that's back on back in business for OEMs. Correct. Okay, what's the other partner? So hyperscalers, let's start with hyperscalers. Now contrary to what you may hear on Reddit or some blogs or something like that, VMware, yes, we are a private cloud company but that private cloud could be on customer data center, or a provider data center, or in a public cloud environment. And we have great partnership with our hyperscalers, with AWS, with Azure, with, uh, with Google, um, allowing customers to take their workloads or enabling them to take their workloads to a public cloud. Now, contrary to what you may hear, we are actually making it easier by introducing something called a subscription or license portability, where customers can take their existing VCF subscriptions from on-prem and easily move to a public cloud without having to pay twice. And that's a big deal. It's not very common in the industry uh, to do that across all hyperscalers. Uh, we are doing it. We are doing it so that customers have the choice. They are in a VCF environment. They can choose to deploy it on-prem, in a public cloud, or in a managed provider cloud, uh, up to them. So that makes it easy for the, cu for the customer. Yes. So you guys are making it easier. Once you get VCF in, you then can pick your workload location. Exactly. So if you want some public cloud, higher level services, data processing, whatever, go do that. Run private and edge. Exactly. Same, no li same license. Same license, same license, same subscription. So there are two parts to it. One is the, what you call commercial portability, where I can, yes, from commercial point of view, I have my license, I can take it to a public cloud and I can, don't have to pay twice. Then there is a technical portability. So we are working with all of our cloud providers, our hyperscalers to make sure that the stack they deploy for the Azure VMware uh, solution or for the Google Cloud VMware engine or for AWS that we run, um, runs the same stack, same technology, compute, management, storage, networking, all together, same VCF stack. So the customer gets the same consistent experience of taking a VM from on-prem and moving it to cloud without having to retweak, without having to really refactor or do anything to that yeah. VM, move that workload very seamlessly and vice versa. So if they have to bring something back on-prem for whatever compliance reasons, privacy yeah. reasons, data protection reasons, they are able to do that as well. We actually had, we actually talked about this on our SuperCloud 6 event we had uh, this year. The 
Hyperscale is win because they can offer choice for the customer too on their higher level services. Absolutely. Customer wins because they get the license change, but also they can start building a distributed computing cloud environment. Exactly. And so everybody wins. Everybody wins. And there are many scenarios. I mean, some customers are in the uh, process of retiring a data center and they want to move it over and they want to move it over very quickly. Our VMware cloud solution, the VCF on a hyperscaler gives them a very quick option to do that as well. So that's a, a good thing. Or if they want to take advantage, as you said, the higher value or some yeah. functions or serverless services in the public cloud or IoT services, they get to have the data proximity where the application they are using next to the database that are running in a VMware environment in the yeah. same cloud. Actually, we, know, we talked about this earlier in the segment, I think we're going to talk about it as well with the other folks from Broadcom. The actually, the sustainability equation also factors in here. You get the choice between however you want to deploy that workload, cloud, on-prem, wherever, that also comes into factor. You might not have enough power. You mentioned Absolutely. the data center. I don't have enough power in my data center. Exactly, exactly. And that power has become now the, the, the call it the bottleneck for how customers are looking to expand their data center, how much power is available. So they get to have what I call the release valve, <laughs> so they can take those growth or additional workload to a public cloud or a managed cloud environment. This is the whole purpose of like multi-cloud, multi-environment, distributed computing, let it be architected in a way. So you got the OEMs, you got the hardware, you got the clouds, what are your other Let's partners? Let's talk about the, the, our cloud service provider, our CSP partner. CSP partner have been an awesome, over the last decade and a half, they've been an awesome, awesome partner. Give some partner. examples of the CSPs. CSPs, I mean, if you look at within US, you got Rackspace and you got IBM and you got Lumen and, 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 and CenturyLink, I mean, now Lumen. Uh, you have telcos uh, in Europe and you have all of these local regional cloud providers mm -hmm. that offer not just a call a hosted service, infrastructure mm -hmm. service to the customer, but also provide sovereign cloud experience in some of the regulated industries and some of the uh, yeah. you know, sovereign cloud markets. So they become a very, very, yeah. very important part of our ecosystem because they are providing that and they provide white glove service yeah. to customers in terms of managing and um, uh, their overall IT. That's a major growth area, by the way. You got Edge, big part of the Edge yes. is involved with the CSPs, also specialty services. Absolutely. Big part of the CSPs growth. Absolutely. Yeah, and we made we made quite a bit of changes in in in, in that program, um, and and that was across the board. We had we had inconsistency across our ecosystem. Um, we were selling things uh, in a different unit of measurement. So for our service provider, which used to be called our VCPP program, um, the unit of measurement was gigabyte of memory. When we were selling with OEM, we were selling on a CPU basis. When we were selling with hyperscalers, it was on a node or a server basis. And it just made it extremely hard for customers and customer to look at a quote from three different partners and be able to compare, am I getting a good deal? So one of the biggest change we made is consistency of our licensing and our unit of measurement. Everything is in a per physical core basis. The advantage of that now is that a customer can get a price point and they can see what is my total TCO going to be before I actually adopt the service. So that's a big change we made in our uh, CSP ecosystem that is all going to be per core. And the second big change is requiring that the cloud they will use is full stack VCF. And that's very important, again, as I talked Explain about. Explain that real quick, because that's yeah. important. The nuance there, the full stack VCF, describe that. So full stack VCF, when you want to provide a cloud experience to the customer, you have to have as Earlier you had a conversation with Paul talked about mm -hmm. um, the compute virtualization, the networking virtualization, the storage virtualization, and the management and automation yeah. around with that to me is a private cloud experience. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that customers have a consistent private cloud experience because that's what they are mm -hmm. seeking. That's what they why sometimes they go to a public cloud for that agility. We want to be able to have our partners provide the same experience to that customer, that public cloud experience in a private cloud-like environment. Uh, of course they get to add yeah. a lot of value added service, the monitoring, the security yeah. and other. Otherwise it'd be a mismatch basically. Otherwise it'd be a mismatch, it would be a hodgepodge, kind of like yeah. buying car parts from yeah, different yeah. manufacturers <laughs> and building together your own car and selling it in the name of BMW. Yeah. You want to make sure when you're selling something in the name yeah. of BMW has the core guts yeah. of a BMW so the customer have a consistent experience yeah. and expectation of how it will be serviced, how it will be managed, how it will be supported. Yeah, VM, VMware uh, uh, VCF is that sports car. It's the it's the full package. Full package. With VCF. And they got vSphere Foundation as well. They're going to do just if virtualization. They're do just virtualization. All right, so um, you guys have to programize all this. Your Partner Connect used to be. Is that still around? So Partner Connect is uh, decommissioned. Okay. So now it's the Partner Broadcom Advantage program. Okay. And the Broadcom Advantage program. And the, one of the uh, call it aha moments and big change we made is the difference in philosophy of how you work with the partners. So for example, our Disty and reseller partners. Um, VMware 
in the old days, not saying VMware did anything wrong, it's just the organically over the <laughs> two decade, two and a half decade, we had created layers and layers and layers of different type of incentive model and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and margin and ad plus and registration and, and consumption dollars and activation dollars and it was kind of like spreading the it crumbs. It grew organically though, and that's the whole, the whole community was all growth. It, right? it was, <laughs> it was. It was a Frankenstein after a while. Well, exactly, <laughs> and it served its purpose in at that time, but now when you look at in the spirit of simplification and the philosophy of Broadcom is look, whatever you want to or you can afford to give your partners, give that all up front. Why? So they can build a book of business. They can have clear expectation of how much margin or incentive I have to play with in terms of discounting, in terms of hiring my sales force and sending them properly. So I can build a business around it knowing very well what my margin profile is going to be. Over the many years, we have gotten consistent yeah. feedback from partners that, hey, I don't know what my profitability is like selling with VMware. And that's exactly what we are changing with uh, the new model with the Broadcom. That's partner. a really big point. I mean, first of all, Broadcom, I've been covering Broadcom for a long time. They're very strong. They understand soft dollars co-op. What do you want to call it? Yeah. Marketing dollars on performance, but partners want to know where do I make my money? Exactly. How do I, can I get customer distribution? That's all they really, I mean, they do care about other things. I'm just saying that's the core. Is the product sellable? How much money am I going to make? Can I wrap services around it? Exactly. Can you unpack that philosophy? How does Broadcom Advantage mm -hmm. program hit that mark? So, uh, exactly as I talked about, uh, in the Broadcom Partner Advantage program, um, we give all of that margin, all of that incentive upfront as part of the margin that allows that partner to be predictable, of, have predictable um, operating margin of how much discount they are going to give to the customer, how much they are going to pay their salespeople, and how much it's in it for them. Um, the second part of that is um, different types of partner can build different services around it. So you got partners that are CSPs that I talk about where they package the whole managed service around that infrastructure offering. You have these value-added resellers who provide um, uh, integration services, deployment integration services, and some provide even ongoing management uh, and support services to the customer. The other change we made is we moved our support experience closer to the customer by enabling DISTIs to be the one providing the level one and level two support. Um, not only we trained our DISTs to be able to take those support calls, especially um, in the commercial segment, but make sure that we transfer even our engineers, support engineers to those distributors so they can be closer to the customer, provide a better support experience. And of course, Broadcom, VMware, we take the level three support and, uh, and higher. So on the quote supply chain, if you want to say supply chain, there the distributors could have service to their bars. Correct. They keep that in line, so they're tightly coupled there. They're tightly coupled. You give margin, visibility into the partners, they must love that. What's the feedback? I imagine it must um, be great. It's, it's been actually, um, so there was, uh, call it change is always hard. Yeah. So anytime something is changed, people feel like, okay, why am I changing? What am I changing? What, is it, what does it mean for me? Once we had the partner given, you know, had time to internalize that change and they realized it's actually good for me. So we have pretty much all of our 18,000 plus partners have re-signed up. All of our distributors are now on board. Our yeah. partners are signed up and we are actually uh, doing business great together. Uh, so yes, the change part is hard. The first It's not like you're moving a commodity in the VARs. This is integrations. They need to have planning. They can put resources to it. It's a risk management, but also a business model, business model. opportunity for yeah. them. And you're solving that problem. Exactly. What, exactly. So they're going to want more, obviously. Give me more. <laughs> so how do they earn more? So how do they make more money for them? Is sell um, more product? It's to sell more product. Sell more product. And we enable them to sell um, pretty much our entire stack, all of our products. Uh, partners can sell to pretty much any customer. So we enable that. Um, our CSP partners, actually, we have a co-sell motion with our Pinnacle top tier partner as they become more and more top tier, meaning uh, Pinnacle partner. They have a co-sell motion where our sales team work directly with them on pipeline, on joint opportunities and earning and driving business together. Mm -hmm. Same thing we're doing with hyperscalers where we have uh, business development people working with the hyperscaler sales team and enabling them, arming them, mm -hmm. making sure we can win our customers together. Um, do the same thing with OEM. So, VMware under Broadcom putting even more emphasis on selling with the partner, selling together, okay. making sure that we grow the entire ecosystem along with the business. So Broadcom Advanced Program, just run this through again, so just so I get it right. The tiering and the thresholds are based on uh, sales or capabilities or both? Both, a combination of uh, capabilities, certifications, as well as uh, the volume. Um, so it is uh, based on all. Uh, and there are different tiers. How's the program look for right now? Does it look pretty stacked? Are you pretty happy with it? Uh, we are very happy with it. And uh, like I said, in the transition phase, we grandfathered all of the previous partners, whatever tier they had mm -hmm. with uh, VMware, we grandfathered them into the 
uh, Broadcom Advantage uh, program tier. So if they were top tier, they are now top tier okay. pinnacle within Broadcom Advantage. And of course, yeah. Next year, year after that, everybody will um, uh, c continue to earn their way into the n uh, top tier. So when you had that little bump, blip in the radar, a little disruption when you had, were get onboarding and revamping the program, um, there was some talk about changes in the dollars, reimbursement dollars, marketing dollars, because that's been a big part of the VMware Connect program, the, co the Partner Connect program. Is the Broadcom Advantage program still have those incentives for marketing dollars, uh, it's been a big part of the VMware ecosystem where they would be able to use those dollars to come to the shows and do things like that. Yeah, so it's actually a change. It's actually a change, and as I said, you know, instead of doing multiple tiers of dollars here and five dollars here for this and ten dollars yeah. here for this, Broadcom model, um, Advantage Program model, is all of it up front. You get to decide how much you want to spend towards marketing, how much you want to spend towards sales incentive, how much you want to spend towards discounting, and uh, you know, competing in winning business. So it just makes it easier. Makes partner be the one deciding versus us deciding that no you have to spend this percentage uh, toward marketing let the because every partner is different they have yeah. their own marketing program they have their own sales engine let them be the one deciding what's good for their business versus us dictating that these are the dollars that are ring fence for this uh, activity and these are the dollars so for less compliance management and less compliance exactly and simplification management so so you you actually know the baseline where they're at the tier so you can actually do that up front, exactly. Mainly, okay. all of it is up all up front, uh, and they get to decide how they want to spend. The okay, money. so uh, Mark, talk about the the vibe so far. What's been the reaction? What has been some of the conversations you've had with folks? Yeah, so I've been meeting with partners and customers for the last uh, seven eight months uh, nonstop, and uh, the like I said, the initial reaction was uh, change. What does it mean for me? Is my cost of going up? Is my price is going up? Why are you changing the unit of measurement? I used to be in a per CPU. Now it's in a per core. What does it mean? I used to be able to buy perpetual licenses and now it's all subscription, mm -hmm. which is an industry trend. Subs perpetual to subscription has been happening over the last 15 years. Yeah. We are probably the last major software vendor <laughs> to- There are a lot of freebies out there too, don't get me <laughs> to, to do that. But um, the, the, that change yeah. took a while for customers and our, also our partner to industrialize or in, in, internalize. What does it mean for me? Um, what, how does it impact me? And once we have had the opportunity to explain that change, once they've been able to internalize how is it good for me, how structurally Broadcom is creating a level yep. playing field for all of our partners to be able to effectively compete in the market and win business together, that has really has been very, very positive. It's great to see some um, structural stability and leadership on the go-to-market with the partners. Awesome strategy, because it's a heterogeneous environment we're moving to. Exactly. And choice is going to be very key, so that's awesome. One thing I wanted to ask you, because this is a unique thing with VMware, now Broadcom, VMware, and VCF, is that over the years, VMware has grown organically, because it's been a revolution with virtualization, it's been pioneering, but it's grown to be massive. Like yeah. you said, you streamlined some of the stuff, with simplify with Broadcom, new business model. But there's been a community um, of VMware operators, the community is pretty robust. Yeah. It's not normal. I mean, other companies don't have this size and scale. Um, and, and with that, you get great conversations. You also get people who like speak back and get feedback. How is the community leveraged in? Because I'm assuming that's going to be a, an opportunity for you guys to weave that into the channel and the indirect sales yeah. through your partners. Yeah. How, is that, how do you see the whole community thing um, tying in. So we do have our partner technical advisory board, the PTAB. We also have our V expert and we have our uh, customer community, the CTAB. So we do leverage our community and all the feedback and questions and, um, and advice we get from our uh, ecosystem, both from a customer side as well mm -hmm. as from our partner side. So those are alive and, mm -hmm. and, and, and doing well and we'll continue to have. Uh, so VM, the VMware Cloud Foundation is the core jewels and the way you guys have put this platform together, it is the private cloud innovation platform for enterprises. It's like the whole package. Yeah. It's the big, it's a big enchilada as I would say. So as you guys roll out the go to market, this is going to be a big part of the future. So what's your vision on the go to market as you go forward? Obviously you got some new programs in place. Take us through how you see the next you know, few years unfolding and what's your vision? The focus, the key focus is end customer. How do we serve end customer? How do we provide cloud experience for our end customers through VCF, VCF being the crown jewel. And as we think about the setting up our partner ecosystem, growing our partner ecosystem to make sure that we A, provide consistency, consistency of the platform through our partners, whether it's OEM, whether it's our hyperscaler engine, whether it's our, um, uh, our cloud service provider and reseller, make sure that there is consistency from a technology perspective, but then also commercially, mm -hmm. to make sure that we are creating a level playing field, making sure that we are providing choice 
and the best transaction experience for our end customer so they can compare their choices. They can have the VCF, they can compare their choices. Where do I want to work? Uh, where do I want to deploy those workloads and who mm -hmm. do I want to work with to manage it for me? Yeah, and the choices, I love how you have the choice with OEMs, you got partnering there, the hyperscalers, and giving that portability is a huge factor. Um, how did that respond? How did people respond to that when you say, hey, you got some portability options here? Customers love it. Customers love it. And then once I even explain to our uh, hyperscaler partners and our service provider partner, they love it. Because the reaction is, okay, now you're making it easy. The initial cost for customer adoption is coming down. Mm -hmm. And for customers, it was actually, uh, for two reasons, it was actually um, very good. One is not having to pay twice if I'm going to move my workload from one to the other. But more importantly, it was yeah. like a choice, an insurance policy that, hey, I'm signing up yeah. for a three-year subscription. What if my plan change? What if we get a new CIO and he wants to do, do it something differently and want to outsource IT or take it to a public cloud? I'm not stuck. I have a subscription that is portable, that if yeah. my strategy changes tomorrow, my deployment mode changes tomorrow, I'm not stuck anywhere, I can move it. And if I go to public cloud and I don't like it or I don't have the same low cost experience, I can bring it back. Yeah. That choice, that insurance policy, that convenience is what customers really appreciate and love. You know, optionality has always been a great thing. When we started covering the super cloud a few years ago, we saw the multi-cloud coming. People were like, wait a minute, you know, I don't get this. And we said, hey, everybody wins. Yes. If this outcome continues, distributed computing is going to be about choice and may the best cloud environment win. And a private cloud, public cloud, they're not going to be mutually exclusive. They're going to work together. And then it ended up happening. So this is where we are now. So as we go forward, we need to see this continue. So what are you going to be investing in? What's your priorities? Uh, take us through some of the things you're thinking about so in terms of the, the business model. Obviously, my business model or my area of focus is partners. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if I were to recap all of the things, the focus with OEM is going to be how we create these jointly engineered solution systems out in the market so that solve a customer business problem. Of course, they're going to continue to ship hardware with, uh, with, with, with software and everything, but, and anybody can do that. But the key, the partners that we're going to work with in OEM are the ones that are committed to building these engineered systems um, for us. Hyperscalers, full adoption of VCF, making sure that um, we have the license portability and how we make it easy for our joint customers so they can have the best of both worlds. They can have a hybrid, true hybrid, true multi-cloud environment. For cloud service provider, the focus is how do we help grow that ecosystem? How do we focus on um, these um, pinnacle, premier, and registered partner, grow that ecosystem, provide a choice to the customer that, hey, I don't want to have the binary choice of a public cloud or a private cloud. Can I also have a local service provider that can manage me, that can white glove provide that service to me. Those are very important, especially in sovereign uh, markets or industries. Having that uh, be the option for the customer. And then of course, with the, with the resellers, we want to make sure that they're all profitable. Yeah. They're all working, they're all um, engaging with uh, our customers yeah. and providing the right service and have the good profitability so they can grow their business. And they have the services to wrap around that too, that they can actually achieve doing. You know, I got to tell you, you know, my, in my career, I've seen the success from in partnerships and channels and indirect uh, partnerships and, and ecosystems. The number one success factors are great product, there's demand for the product, it's great, leadership, and predictability on the business profitability. Correct. And then three, how do I make more gross profit by managing services which they can control and everybody wins? Exactly. That seems to be lined up for you guys. That is exactly it. It's exactly it, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to help. I love the Cube conversation. We're going to see you at VMware Explorer coming up. Uh, any uh, focus there? Obviously, the big partner on ecosystem celebration. Uh, any uh, teaser about what's coming? Oh, I would not. I would not uh, give you any teaser. But uh, look, uh, we have a packed agenda, um, and would love to see you at Explore. And we yeah. will have a lot more to talk about, a lot more announcements that we have planned, and uh, we'll talk about more. We'll be talking to your partners on the Cube. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you. Okay, we're here in Palo Alto for VMware Cloud Foundation. We're digging in deep. We're getting all the data and sharing that with you. And of course, VMware Explore is coming up in a few months. This is the Cube. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs>